Um, if you want to come on back in, we are going to wrap up a little bit. Did everybody, was everybody able to get through the exercise? Yeah? What, what, is, what did you learn? Did anybody learn anything new? Hopefully. <laughs> anybody want to uh, raise their hand and say what they learned? Yes. Sure. What did you learn? You learned how to do Git? Awesome. <laughs> Yay, success. That's our goal. <laughs> Very cool. So um, one more thing that you can learn is a little bit more about open source. And so for that, we're going to have Bjorn, who's going to give a little talk about why you should contribute to open source. Um, he's a member of the community here in Singapore. And so I'm going to turn this over to him, and he will tell you more. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> so I said, my name is Bjorn, and just as a fun fact, that means bear in the country of my people, which would be Sweden. For some reason we have a national day today, I tried to figure out as a fun fact why that is, but basically we had a king in the 16th, 16th century and that's why we have a national day. Not every country has that boring of a national day. <laughs> so I am a developer, I'm a Dev DevOps guy, meaning that I also play around with servers. Hopefully I'm a better coder, but who knows. And I talk a lot. So I would like to mention to you a little bit why open source is good, amongst other things. And one of the things I really love with open source personally is just that you learn so much from reading other people's code. That's probably the best way you're gonna, ever going to get anywhere with programming, by reading. And you get so much stuff for free. Like I, am, I use Rails, I use Django, I use a bunch of other tools and toolkits, Git itself. And it's saving me so much time whenever I work. And it's all available. It's all available for all of you. So that's great. Sorry, I just realized I don't have my speaker notes up, and that's great to have. There we go. Thank you. And then the question is, what is open source? So open source has a formal definition. There's also something else called free software. And I'm not going to talk about that today. It's it's mostly interchangeable, except when it isn't, and if you want to know about it, you can look it up online. It's basically open source, a little more, more free version of it all, as in you have more ability to do things. Uh, the open definition of open source contains about 10 steps. So the first part of it is that you have free distribution, meaning that you're free to share the code that you have or other people has made available either as code or as a program itself. You know the shareware, shareware of old and all that. You have the ability to look at the source code and modify it. And as you modify it, you're free to work on it and continue sharing on. These three are the most important. Like, They're the easiest to deal and that gets you the basic idea of it all. To see the rest of it, you can look at this website, which will give you what it is. Uh, but Open source isn't just about technology. Like we mostly hear the use that among like makers and software developers or hardware developers, because a lot of us are seeing it in there. But there are other things. Like my mom, she has a great meatball recipe. That's something that's open source. Like you can see it as open source because anyone can get that recipe. You can share it. You can change it. You can modify it. You can, the, the result of the recipe is available for everyone. Well, if you happen to be our dinner table, but different story. And why and how did I end up contributing to open source is, it's basically one of these things that I felt that the community was giving me so much for free. I was learning so much, so I wanted to give back. But I was also scratching my own itch, because sometimes things just aren't working and, <laughs> yeah. Telling people to fix it doesn't necessarily work. You just have to go in and take care of it yourself. <laughs> So you start fixing bugs, you start contributing back, because at the end of the day, if I have that bug, maybe someone else will. And maybe they will fix my bugs. So you help out. There's also a big case where you just look at a library or something, and it's almost doing what you need. It is so close, but there's that tiny little thing that's missing. So you go in, you add that. At some point, maybe you add a big thing. Like It just keeps building, and that's what we're standing on. Like We keep building software together, getting bigger. And then there are cases where I saw something and I wanted to make it. I saw the problem for myself. And I didn't find a solution already, which is why I built it myself. 
and I saw that I could just give it out to other people so they didn't have to do that themselves, which can all go. And another thing that I felt with open source is that you never know what you do will be useful. As an example, I made a couple of years ago, back in 2008, The Dark Ages, a, a little Ruby script to help me download YouTube videos and extract audio from them because Spotify wasn't around yet. And the little script stopped working after a couple of years because YouTube changed and apparently they don't want you to download their videos. But sometimes this year, a colleague of mine from Australia came and told me, thank you for putting that script up. And I go, why? How did you find that? Oh, I was Googling a problem about the FFmpeg, which is a program I use inside of that. And the way you'd use it solved my problem. I'm like, really? That thing was dead. It, didn't be, it hasn't been working since 2010. But so you never know whenever something that you did is going to be useful to someone else. So always leave your things around. It's not like my room. And another thing is just that, as I mentioned, you can solve a bug, you can fix something, and you may have had a problem, and someone else may have a problem. At work, we use this piece of software called Go, which is a continuous integration server, meaning that it runs your tests, it can deploy your stuff, and there was a little bug there that if you got a spa um, blank space at the end of a file, it would just lock up the entire server. So that happened, and our server was down for a day while we were trying to figure out what was going on and how it worked and trying to get it out of the loop that it ended up in. It was terrible. Like, we have developers that couldn't push their code because they couldn't verify whether anything was good. So what to do? So we finally got it working. We fixed, found a patch, and that's now pushed into that. And I now know that whenever an agent for this software boots up, which is thousands, it's probably hundreds of thousands of agents around the world, it will run my little piece of code. And it's fairly cool. Like, a little line there. Admittedly, it was only a strip, but at the end, and anyways. Another one I spent is, there's this a software called Ansible for managing lots and lots of servers. And we found this problem where things just stop working every so often. And I spent something like six hours digging around on the servers, figuring out what's going on. And then I figured out the problem here is that the Ansible module we're working with is not, doesn't understand how Monit works, which was the module we were using. But the fix was just one hour. I just wrote the code in an hour and got it done. I can submit that back, and now we're having a discussion with the Ansible developers about other edge cases that we, we, we also discovered in, during this. And this is going to go in, and I'm hopefully saving someone else having to debug for an hour, maybe the more, who knows. And all of this comes back all the time. Like, I don't know how many countless hours I have not spent debugging stuff because someone else helped out and made it so I didn't have to do it because they spent the time and they helped. And a little bit, I hope you guys will start helping out and you will release your own software you will fix bugs, you will add features. So some days, like at the end of the day, working with computers, you're always working in the shoulders of giants. You're always working because someone else has done some work before you. And some days, I'm, someday I'm hoping I'm going to stand on your shoulders and work off of your work. Hopefully not literally, though, because you're going to be crushed. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Uh, no, um, I think I had a question before about open source. I mean, you like, say it's like an open distributed, which means, does that, does that mean you can use that not only in your private project, but to your work? Sometimes my friends told me, even if it is open source, that doesn't mean you can include that in your, like, what you do in the company. Uh, just repeating the question. So you're asking if every all open source available, you can use that for work as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's where the definition between free software and open source and all of it gets a little bit confusing. There are licenses that allows you to do that, like BSD license, MIT license, for instance, are licenses that allows you to take and use wherever. You can use it in, free, in uh, private projects, you can use it in open projects. If you find the GNU GPL, uh, you are not allowed to use it unless you share back the source code, which means if you put it into your private code, then all your private code needs to go out. It's a viral license in that way. It, it gets a bit complicated, so, but there are, good, if you look at the OSI website or 
like we, I can, if you email me later on, I can give you a link that explains a little bit better. Anyone else? Oh, in that case, thank you. And in case anyone wants my mom's meatball recipe or anything else, you can always get in touch with me. Look at my open source contributions and help out. I have a really cute emoji library for Python if you do that. So please go on. So thank you.